In this section of uh, this box video that I'm making, I want to show you how I mix and measure the epoxy that I want to pour on the top of these boxes. So you have to, first of all, get all your supplies so you're not looking for something halfway through. So, of course, you have your epoxy. Now, this is needed some sort of a something to hold water. I'm just using this measuring cup and I've got some water in here. And then uh, a measuring cup or some sort of measuring device that you can measure half of the liquid that you're going to uh, pour on your project. You need a black felt pen or blue, whatever. A nice clear uh, cup that you've salvaged from something. Those uh, disposable ones and a level you need a level and uh, your propane torch and I've got my matches first thing I did here is I leveled out the uh, pieces by using this little level that's what that's for you have to level it in two directions I just cut some uh, tapered wedges and wedged it up till I could get them all level okay so I'm going to uh, zoom in a little closer here so you can see what I'm doing. I certainly don't have to look at me. I'm not that great to look at. Anyway, just hold on for a second while I switch you over to the Now you're probably <laughs> wondering what I had the, the water for. Well, this is the way I do it. Because usually the uh, device that you're going to pour your epoxy into it is uh, tapered or some odd, odd shape with the bottom etc. So if you take uh, some water and uh, measure out half of the amount that you want to use and then pour it in and then you make a, a mark At the, at the height. Then take another amount of water pour that in and make a, another mark. Now what am I going to do with the water? Well you just pour it out and that'll give the exact two-point mixture. Now one thing I forgot to uh, was a towel or something like that to wipe the water off but that's what shirts are for to uh, do that sort of thing in the shop. So now we take our that can be set aside now. Now I'm going to take uh, one of my epoxy amounts and being a nice clear and of course you should make sure you get the right lid on the right jug and then I do the final one here. And I thought about I thought about uh, getting the uh, mixing uh, a mixing stick, but uh, you always seem to forget something. So. I'll have to go cut a mixing stick here and come back and, and mix this Good up. business. I've got my mixing stick. Now, the w school where I taught at, the woodshop teacher, he was always using pop cans for mixing the epoxy in, but he always had the kids cut it on a slant like that. reason for that is 
so it gets right into the corners and on this cup it tapers down there so I think it's probably a, a, a worthwhile hint there. So we'll mix this up. I don't know of any particular time to uh, that a person should do this. But just give it a good mixing and then I believe I'm going to uh, stop the video again and I'm going to leave it sit for a minute or two uh, to start generating a little bit of heat because once I pour it into here it's going to be uh, a lot thinner and that will start the catalyst uh, uh, action. Here we have two things that like this it should develop a little bit of warmth. You should be able to feel it and you'll know that your mixture is working good. But this is a simple way to uh, get your, your ratio right on 50-50. So a minute or so I'll be ready to go here and uh, we'll pour some in. Don't worry about all the bubbles and stuff that's in the mixture. That'll be taken care of later. Okay, I've let this sit a little while here. So we'll just start to pour it on here. Only do one of them here because we don't need to take so much time. That way I'm not sure if uh, this one I want to be. It's always some sort of distraction that comes in place. This looks like it's going to take the full half cup that I mixed up. And then you just uh, just going to mix it. Uh, Be fairly careful in this one because I don't want to. I'm going to have to mix up some more. I see. Usually, your estimate can be uh, right on. Thought I'd have plenty, but I'm going to need a little bit more from what I can see there. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to mix up a little bit more. I'm going to use a different cup with a different uh, measurement and I'll I've be right added back. some more uh, foxy there to get the, about the amount that I, I wanted there. Now it's time to get rid of the bubbles. Now you can breathe on it, uh, blow on it. That will release some of it, but not that effective. It's the carbon dioxide that uh, causes the bubbles to pop. So most common is to use a propane torch. Uh, I've already lit this one. And then uh, and just wave it down on there. And that'll bring it up really nice. Probably can't see it disappear, but there's all kinds of them there. Just disappeared fast. And then there may be some more that uh, will pop up, so then just go back over. Don't worry about uh, catching it on fire or anything like that. At school, the kids would steal the uh, propane equipment for things they shouldn't be doing. So uh, I often did it for the wood shop tor torch with the uh, the wood shop teacher with my cutting torch in the shop in the metal shop. And I would give it a good burn there. You get a nice crystal clear finish. And that's all there is to it. You get a uh, perfect finish. On this fractional burning, I wanted to lay a 
a nice clear finish over top of it to uh, preserve the uh, the intricate uh, burning marks.